All right, welcome to this lesson on types of canoes. Um, uh, this is our introduction to canoes. So I'm going to actually start by sort of defining a canoe and making sure we totally and, and completely understand the differences between it and, and sometimes uh, some students are confused between that and a kayak. So first of all, a canoe is a narrow keelless boat. Keel meaning, um, if you think of a, a sailboat uh, in this uh, context, I'll just use my pen here. I'm going to draw up here, here in the corner. Um, a sailboat is like this and often has a deep keel that goes underneath and then we have our sails up top. The keel serves a very specific pur purpose. We do not have a keel like this. Sometimes some boats do have some sort of a keel. So I'll just erase this here now just to show you what a keel is. In case you didn't know uh, it has pointed ends we can see the pointed ends on either side of this and is propelled by paddles or a paddle um, this is a, a, a canoe image here but it could easily by this definition also meet the definition of a kayak so it's important that we distinguish between those two and i'll do that in just a second Canoes are generally symmetrical meaning that this end of the canoe the front and the back of the canoe which are called the stern and the bow. So this here is the, the bow, okay? And this part here is the stern, which is the back, okay? And I'll write these on here, back and front, because I know students will get confused. And usually, if you're a boater, you are going to use the proper terms. You just don't use uh, front and back. You say stern and bow, but I, I realize that um, some students will still do that because they're just getting comfortable with uh, boating terminology. We can tell that this is the front simply because there's more space here, foot space, for the, uh, behind the seat. So we have a lot more room to put our feet here. It would be pretty difficult to uh, sit on this seat and go in this direction. That said, um, you can turn the boat around and paddle in the opposite direction. I often do that if I'm only the one person in the boat. I'll sit here and I'll go in this direction and that way I'm a little closer to the center and and uh, that keeps my weight more into the center of the boat. I've even done this when uh, my kids were really small and I would put uh, Everett in the boat and I'd put him right up here when he was just a little guy maybe weighing only 70 or 80 pounds and I was a you know a 200 pound man I would sit here and that would help to keep the the boat a little flatter a little more stable okay. You can paddle the boat forwards or backwards it really doesn't matter it's it's symmetrical in that sense okay now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna explain the difference between a kayak and a canoe because sometimes time time students get confused a canoe is different from a kayak in that kayaks have a closed top or deck so if this was a kayak you would have a deck across the top here that would cover it in all the way here it also has these things called bulkheads and and compartments that you can put things in so kayak are actually quite useful but in different situations generally speaking kayaks are used in big water where there's waves and water splashing up and so the deck is needed to protect the boat from filling up with water and in canoes we don't have that concern because we're used mostly on lakes and other things uh, other smaller bodies of water rivers and stuff most kayaks are designed to transport just one person. They'll have a cockpit, they call it, right in the middle here. And uh, you'll go um, uh, forward in one direction in it, and that's it. Um, they will have these things called hatches, but we're not, this is not about kayaks, this is about canoes. Now, um, ca uh, canoes are generally for two people. You can buy canoes that are solo, so I don't want to suggest that you can't have that. And there are also canoes that are made for more than two people, three, four, five. Um, dragon boat races are essentially done in canoes, and I think they carry like 12 people or something like that in a dragon boat. And uh, so it's not like they're limited, but most canoes that we're talking about, tripping canoes and stuff, are designed for two people. Most kayaks are designed for one. So those are the differences, okay? Now, if we want to get down to types of canoes, we can describe it in different ways just like you could say for example describe bicycles bicycles are made out of different materials um, you may not know this but many bikes today are made out of carbon fiber and in the past they were made out of steel and aluminum so you can still buy steel and aluminum bicycles just like uh, you can buy um, 
uh, old style canoes and canoes early on the original canoes that were made by the native peoples for travel and transport were really important and there was really two different types um, one was known as the the dugout canoe and this was probably more uh, popular in the Amazon um, uh, in this region of the world, this is where we saw the canoe being used uh, quite a bit as a dugout. Uh, the water was pretty calm. Uh, it was a great way to move up and down rivers that were fairly calm, didn't have a lot of uh, waves or, or um, turbulence in them. And so the, uh, that region used uh, dugout canoes. They, we'd take a tree and we'd literally dig out, uh, carve out of the canoe uh, a, a space or place to sit and off you go. They tend to be very narrow um, and a lot of work to build. Uh, I think actually they burned out the, uh, a large portion of the, the log. I'm not exactly sure of the techniques of how it was done. And then in our region, this was more of a North American one, is we had uh, the uh, a, a birch bark canoe. Okay, so the more North American canoe, the natives used a uh, uh, birch bark to build their canoes and this is not a true uh, native uh, canoe but uh, is a sort of a replica of what they did they've used some techniques from modern times to build these but uh, they were very very good and, and a lot of their canoes were actually designed to carry more than two people uh, they probably would have carried a, a larger number and that's I think where the dragon boat racing comes from I really don't know my history on that side maybe I have to look it up one day so those were the two early on we don't see them today anymore but uh, they can be quite beautiful if you uh, were ever to get a uh, get one so today um, what we're seeing is uh, different types of canoes being made and I'm going to show you a number of different materials that make canoes so first of all my, maybe my favorite uh, from an appearance point of view is what's known as a, a cedar strip canoe and cedar strip canoes are absolutely gorgeous they are uh, are wood. Uh, nowadays they often coat them with a, a la layer of fiberglass but the bulk of the boat, the structure of it is made out of strips of cedar. They're very beautiful. The weight varies. Uh, you can get a, a, a probably a cedar strip canoe to, down to 60 pounds, maybe even a little less if you're willing to you know go with really thin strips and really minimize the amount of a uh, of epoxy or glue that you use to hold things together, okay? Because that will factor into um, the weight of the canoe. I would say um, my my problem with them is that they're maybe not quite as strong. They're very beautiful, and I'd always be worried about scratching them up if I was out uh, paddling around in one. I do own. Um, a couple of kayaks that I did build myself. They're not made out of cedar strip, but I've often thought about building something in cedar strip. It's a beautiful uh, system. Uh, aluminum is still uh, fairly popular, and there's one company, Canadian company, called Grumman that makes uh, most of, if not all, of the aluminum canoes that exist in our uh, world today. They're fairly heavy, and they're very strong, quite durable. Um, you can bang into them they will dent and you can kind of dent them back or pound them back you don't really want to do that but uh, they, they, they will take quite a beating uh, some of them are made uh, with uh, three seats in them I find that most of them including this one does not do not have a yoke they just have a three thwarts in the middle here and when you do your lesson on um, the parts you'll understand that this is a thwart which is actually helping support give support to the canoe but um, I do find them a little bit um, clumsy to handle they're heavy um, but they have some advantages and I still do see the odd person uh, canoeing in Algonquin Park with a Grumman so it's not like they don't exist another very popular canoe type is a Royal X I own a Royal X that looks a lot like this one uh, it, Royal X canoes are made of a lay, three layers of, of materials, so uh, actually five in total. So there's like a there's like a, a vinyl layer, um, an ABS layer, uh, a 
foam layer, another ABS layer, and then a vinyl layer. And I'm not going to write all that down, but essentially the material that is is, is a, a layer of sandwiching things together. Sadly, the company that makes Royal X also makes the materials that go inside airplanes. This plastic that they, they create essentially is very strong and very lightweight. And the airline industry really likes it. And canoes were just a small part of their business, and so they stopped making them. And they keep looking online to see if a new company has sort of bought the process to make canoes with it, and I have not yet seen it. But they're so they're so strong and durable that you can still find lots of these canoes out there. My canoe, which is probably 15 years old, is a Royal X and still in very good shape. And I think I run into lots of people with them, lots of companies that have them. Um, you can also find canoes that are just strictly made out of a different type of plastic, not necessarily Royal X, but other kinds of plastics that they've come up with that are very similar. But Royal X seems to be sort of like the Cadillac or the premium version of plastic uh, canoes. A little bit on the heavy side. I find my canoes probably running around 70 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Um, I, I added some skid plates, which add some weight to it, might bring, bring it, getting it closer to 80 pounds. But I, I, I'd uh, say that I really enjoy it. Great for running in rivers where you might run into rocks and stuff. These things are bomb proof. Um, there have been stories where a guy would come down the river sideways and hit a rock and imagine if there's a rock right here and the canoe actually bent on either side like this around the the rock because of the pressure of the water coming down on each side and they were actually able to bend it back into place and on they went and uh, that's pretty impressive when you think about it because normally if a boat bends and folds like that you're never going to use it again and they were able to finish their trip at least and I don't know if the boat was still salvage salvageable after that, but at least they uh, were able to finish and get down the river. All right, so the next one that we see is fiberglass. And for years, fiberglass was the sort of... Uh, uh, the, the uh, material to make a canoe out of. It was fairly light, fairly strong, did everything they needed. And then along came a new material that was even lighter and better. And it was called Kevlar. And nowadays, fiberglass is pretty much gone uh, out of the picture. And it's been replaced by Kevlar. And this is a good picture here of a Kevlar. And look at the weight difference. Okay, 55 to 75 pounds. Now we're, we're actually seeing Kevlar canoes get into the 30s pound range 38 35 pounds it's just ridiculous now a 35 pound kevlar is probably a solo boat fairly short a 55 pound kevlar would be a big boat and it still weighs very very little the boats we rent in, in algonquin park are kevlar this is an example of a 16 foot prospector and we'll learn that in just a minute what a prospector is and it it Probably you can get these in the low 40s, mid 40s weight wise, which is really incredible. It's a gorgeous boat. Um, you can see the Kevlar uh, material through here. Sometimes they're so thin and they make them kind of clear with resin that they're almost like translucent. You can see through them. Now, I would caution people that they are not like as strong as like a Royal X. You don't want to run them into rocks and you don't want to sit on them. They bend and kind of twist a little bit when you're on the land and so you have to be a little more careful with handling them but the weight is worth it especially when you're on a trip in Algonquin Park and you have to portage long distances so Kevlar is the way to go for those kinds of trips okay now we can look at canoes as well for based on their use okay so I'm going to teach you a little something about the, the shape and design of a canoe. Just like, uh, well, I'll give you a good example. You all know the difference between a road bicycle and a mountain bike. They're very different. In fact, they look completely different. And they have different uses. You wouldn't take your road bike and go riding around a bunch of trails. And personally, I don't really like riding my mountain bike on a road. It can be done, but it's a lot slower and a lot less efficient. Well, the same sort of thing happens in a uh, canoes. So we have canoes that are made for flat water and lakes. And this is a good example of one. And what I'm looking at here that makes it me tells me that this is a lake canoe is how flat the bottom of the canoe is all along here. We refer to this as the rocker. Okay. There's very little rocker here. So 
rocker is how much the bottom of the canoe kind of rolls along. And I'm not seeing much rocker on this. And what that does is it helps keep the canoe move in a straight line. It gives it the ability to track. They call that tracking. Really good tracking. It goes straight ahead, okay? So when you're tracking, tracks well, okay? Moves, which means it moves straight ahead like it's just going to move in a nice straight line okay easily i don't have to worry about steering it as much it's it's in good shape and this is what we refer to as a laker or a flat water canoe okay if i have a cottage on a lake and i'm just going to paddle around the lake all the time this is the kind of canoe i want i want to cut across to my buddy's place on the other side of the lake or a few cottages down this is the kind of canoe i want to have in that situation Okay, now if I move to the next one, which is the exact opposite, so I'm going from one extreme to the other, I'm going to go to a whitewater canoe. Okay, and in this particular canoe, uh, first of all, they're often made for just one person, and what we start to see is we get a lot more rocker. Okay, we can see the curvature right here on there, lots of rocker. Okay, lots, sorry, of rocker. Miss the word of. Lots of rocker, okay? Turns easily. If you try poor, it's poor at tracking, right? Poor tracking. If you were to get in this boat and start to paddle and try to go across to your buddy's place, you'd probably like go one way this way, and then the next paddle stroke, the canoe would go this way, and you'd be kind of, you just go back and forth, back and forth. People who don't really know how to canoe very well just find this really frustrating. They're just like zigzagging their way across a lake. It is not, not good. But in a river, I can literally turn and spin and do all kinds of pivots, move where I need to go quickly and rapidly. And sometimes that's what I need to do. I'm, I'm in a river with white water and I got to get into a safe spot, an eddy or whatever. And I know this course isn't about that kind of thing. This is about explaining to you how you can move this canoe really rapidly. Okay. So we had these two kind of canoes and along came really a third type of canoe, which was called more or less referred to as a prospector canoe. And this is really a tripping canoe. It's a canoe for going on a trip. And this is what our canoes look like. Okay. Um, many of them look just like these canoes here. Okay. I would say uh, this, this one here is probably very typical of what we see in Algonquin Park, okay? It's a clipper, 16-footer, lots of room, okay? So these ones have some, I would say some rocker, not much, okay? They'll have some rocker. They'll have a flat bottom. And the flat bottom uh, allows for a little easier turning, uh, they don't have any kind of keel or anything that's going to allow them to track straight. You have to be able to do that yourself. But they do have the ability to um, uh, they they do have the ability to uh, turn fairly well. Okay, and they can be made out of uh, uh, Royal X or fiberglass or Kevlar, um, even aluminum for that matter, any any material, okay? Uh, the ones, depends on what your use is. If you're going to be doing a lot of portaging, you want a Kevlar one. If you're going to be in a river, you're going to want a, uh, a Royal X or, or maybe a Grumman, all right? So that factors into it. So this is kind of like one of those ones that's sort of in between. Um, there's usually a fair bit of lift uh, across here in this area of the, the canoe, okay, um, so that it can cut through waves and do that kind of stuff fairly well. It's not, um, it's not a, a, the, it, I, it's my favorite kind of canoe to paddle, to be honest. It's just kind of, they handle well, they, they track reasonably good, and they turn really well. So you kind of get a bit of both worlds. It's sort of like riding a hybrid bicycle. So a hybrid bicycle is a great example of what a prospector does. It has the ability to go and hit the trails a little bit, get on the road, I can still go fairly fast, right? It has so has all of those abilities.
All right, so the last thing I'm going to mention here is that what do we use, okay? So when we go down the Saugeen, we use mostly plastic Royal X canoes. Sometimes there's a few fiberglass ones. We almost never, ever see a, a Kevlar. They're way too heavy. Now, they almost all are prospector styles, but I don't want to guarantee that. I mean, sometimes... Um, uh, sometimes you will see uh, a, a, a Laker a canoe here. Almost never do we take a whitewater. Uh, we're not going to be bringing a whitewater canoe in. It just isn't something that we do. Um, I don't know why. Well, I know why, because the Saukeen River really isn't any whitewater, and that's, that's basically what's happening. Now, when we get on the Algonquin trip, we're going to take a Kevlar. Oh, I spelled that wrong, so let me correct that here. Kevlar, 16-foot prospector canoes, and they're very light. They're very expensive. Um, I would say they weigh in at about 43 pounds now. I'm going to say 40, let's say 45 pounds, just to be safe. 45 pounds, and they, uh, they probably cost to buy new, if you or I wanted to buy one, about $3,500. They're not cheap, so I really tell kids, be careful because I don't want to have to foot the bill to to replace it. The 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 companies that we rent from have multiple multiple. I mean they 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 have maybe sixty to a hundred of these in their fleet, and they rent them out all summer long, and they takes them about two to three years to pay back the cost of one of these things just in renting because they you know they're not cheap. Although the renting uh, rental fees are going up and up every year. So that's what we use and uh, hope you learned a little bit about canoes and different types of canoes from watching this video.